For 40 years, my dad has traveled the globe handling the world's most dangerous reptiles. I've been doing it for like 10 minutes. Let's go handle our most dangerous animals. <laughs> And remember guys, none of these animals are actually dangerous, mean, or aggressive if you give them the respect they deserve. Let me explain. These giant reticulated pythons, they have a pretty bad rap these days. And that's because people think that they are man-eaters because they have eaten man in the wild. How are you doing, Jay? I, do you have anything? I have a little bit of the tail. Ow. Noah, Ow. Noah, what are sorry. you doing? Okay. But the truth is, in captivity and stuff, if you're responsible and you do the right things, odds are you're not gonna get eaten by this giant 20 foot snake that definitely weighs more than I do. And maybe both of us combined. Yeah, that's what, words, yeah. Oh, Jason. Oh no, you weren't helping me. As you can see, this is a big snake that can do lots of damage, so never handle a big snake like this by yourself. It's not smart. Look at how long these snakes can go. Incredible feat of nature. Cool. Yes, Jay. Oh, that was cool. Who so, was it cool for? Me. So yes, they have eaten people in the wild. We're all about forgiveness here. And especially... Okay, guys, basically what Noah is trying to say is some of these stories that you've heard, sure, maybe some of them are true, but at the end of the day, these animals, they just want respect. Respect. Where's the head? I don't even know. Zoe? No. Nope. Look at her. Literally, what are you doing right now? Why is it taking so long? I love how he just says don't do this and don't do that when he's doing literally nothing. Look at what I got her to do. And you get a free massage. Does it feel good, does it? Yeah, it really gets deep into the muscles. You should definitely not handle a snake like this by yourself without supervision. I'm supervising. Look at her climbing up the tree right there. That is so cool. I mean, this is what you would see in the wild. That's why this, this tree feature right here is so unique. Special by having a big snake in a big, big enclosure. <sighs> So we have a bunch of other giant snakes that we'll be handling in this video. But first, let's hand out some other giants here at the Reptarium. <laughs> Mike? No. What? He said we were handling giants. You are pretty big. Salt and pepper. Let's get them out. About to get so wet. <laughs> and that's the nice one. <laughs> God. I'm gonna try to grab okay. the front and I'm gonna... Okay. Ow. Okay, it's already wet. <laughs> he always does that first. He knows that's gonna happen. So strong. As we learned in other Gatorland videos, alligators have muscles that are five times as dense as humans. So an alligator this size may seem small, but you have to picture her five times the size in human form. I mean, she's basically Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, And you can see it takes two full-grown adults to yeah. actually wrangle Pepper here. The strength on her is incredible. Yeah, she's really strong now. And so Pepper here was born with a bit of a spicy disposition as into comparison of Salt here. Salt was born very chill. We work less with Pepper because she does not like to be handled and never has. But also Salt has not the best vision. That's typically a trait in reptiles with albinism is their eyesight's not the same. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. In Salt's case, it helps us out, we believe, make her more chill. But since Pepper has that perfect vision and that spicy disposition, it is not a great combo because it gives her abilities to void off human contact, which she does not enjoy. But we also have to remember that alligators are 37 million year old predators. They're not meant to be lapdogs. Salt here, she is pretty much a lap puppy. But Pepper, mm -mm. she's that dinosaur. So yes, do we have a docile alligator like Salt? We do. But we still have to treat her like an alligator, because she is one. I'm gonna leave this to the professionals. Thank you guys. You can put her away now. Perfect. You guys, and just so you know, it's literally still just as dangerous putting her back as she is coming out. She can turn around, tail can whack. What? Yep. What a dismount, Mike. Good job. Okay, that's a good girl. One high five. One, two. <laughs> Mike yeah, filmed one sense. piece with us. He's so good <laughs> wet. I'm not as wet as I thought I would be. Pythons are male reticulated pythons. Now males, there's a bit of sexual dimorphism with here. Not only with size, but actually their teeth a little bit different. They're actually serrated. Now what do they use those for, Jay? They use that when they're battling for territory, when it's time to find mates. They use those teeth for a lot of things, for catching their prey. That's why they have the teeth orientated the way that they are. But look how smart this guy is. You have to remember, there's three people right here. The cameraman, Jay, and I. He seems like he's in a defensive posture, as he is, but he's not choosing to strike in between that pause that strike it actually leaves him vulnerable so we just staying postured up 
but he's not striking. It's really interesting to watch how smart these guys are. He's, he's coiling up, getting ready to strike. All that body, he's coiling it up, getting to reach long. Ah, just like that. Now that's nothing crazy. That's just kind of a get away from me. I don't want to be messed with. Trying to just get us away from him to buy him some ground because we're scary to him. He's a predator to smaller animals. Honestly, we're a predator to him. Those teeth are scary though, because as we said, they're serrated. So if he gets a handle on you, pulls back, it's just absolutely gushing. You see his body language curling up. Wow! Loading up the rest of his body just like that to be able to spring himself outward. And something that dad always taught me, it's right after that spring one, if you want to try to handle a snake, that is your time to do so. Right after they strike, that is when they're most vulnerable, but that is your time to act and you have to act quickly. So let's get Titan back. As we mentioned, retics are sexually dimorphic. So let's take a look at the reticulated to python teeth and compare the male to the female teeth. Just like that. I sweat a lot. You are sweating a lot. I get hot. And as you can see here, this is a male's tooth, the larger one, and this is a female's tooth. Now surprisingly, the smaller female tooth actually came from a larger female snake. And so it really gives you the example that there is quite that difference right there. Now Titan might hit you with some of these curved teeth like this, bow, and then rip with that serration. It will leave you gashes whoa, all up in your arm. You will be a mess. Baby Kush here is our crocodile monitor. Now crocodile monitors are unique because they have that venom in their saliva, similar to the Komodo dragon. If you do get bit by a crocodile monitor and you do not treat it, it will get infected. That infection can actually be deadly. It has killed people in the past if not taken care of properly. Not only that, but if you see, he is defensive. And you see on his lips right there, Ooh, he's trying to get me away. And if you see on his lips right there, they're red. That is because his teeth are so sharp that it will actually make his own gums bleed. How crazy is that? Imagine just living your life, making your own gums bleed because your teeth are that sharp. He's in the tree right here. They are tree monitors, essentially, known as tree dragons. And so their teeth are evolved to actually catch certain prey items like birds, mice, because it has to catch them out of the air and make sure that those animals don't get away. Not only that, they have a serious serration so that if you do get bit, not only you have to worry about that infection but odds are you're going to be going to the hospital and be getting many many stitches which is pretty gnarly now take a look at these claws he's been a bit of a cranky mood so i won't be handling him but you guys get the point They're essential for climbing those trees as we talked about but if he does find like let's say there's like a deer on the ground or something too big that crocodile monitor like kush here couldn't swallow well he may use those claws to rip open that prey get a little bit of that organ meat out very well possible another factor here with the crocodile monitors and, and monitors in general to be honest is is the intelligence he is sizing me up he he's making decisions right now Right when I walked in here, he's staying put on his branch. He has moved quite a little bit. His neck is puffed out. Now he's saying, hey, look at, I'm big, I'm bad. You don't want to mess with me. You heard a little bit that he had those hisses where he's like, <sighs> he's giving those deep breaths, sounding intimidating. Now, th those are indicators to me that, hey, he doesn't really want to be messed with. And I'm going to be smart enough and responsible in my own case. Of, you know, okay, today's not today. I'll let him be. But he is calculating those decisions in his head. He knows that I'm not getting too close to him, so he's just going to stay right put. Or he is having those defensive displays here where he's saying, don't muck with me. Now, another thing that I don't know if it's been scientifically studied or not, but I know through sports medicine that there are such things called fast twitch muscle fibers and slow twitch muscle fibers. When feeding a crocodile monitor like Baby Kush, it is honestly one of the fastest striking monitors that I see. So I believe that they are jam-packed those fast twitch muscle fibers because literally when you are feeding him, he may strike bang, 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 three, four times where it's so fast my brain actually can't calculate it and it just looks like a big blur. So these guys are extremely athletic. Butterscotch is a female reticulated python. This is one of the most athletic snakes that we have. I mean, it's literally unmatched. We can stand two, three feet away, throw a four pound rabbit in the air and then boom, she can catch it and put herself back in her enclosure. Like, that's crazy. She has that anchoring ability. She's got sticks and, and rocks and such. She might coil her tail around there. S up, launch out as you see. Catch that rabbit, wrap it up, and then pull it back up into the thing. The strength, the athleticism, the speed, those muscle fibers just firing. That thing would jack you up. That deserves a lot of respect. It's something else other than her just being athletic is we don't talk a lot about snakes and their eyesight. But I mean, think about the most impressive eyesight that you have to have. It's like our hand-eye coordination. It's like mouth-eye coordination that she has to be able to see a moving object that, mind you, she only sees once a week, once every 10 days, just to be able to boom, catch it in the air and almost never miss. I would say out of the time that she misses, it's literally because 
we're weak a little bit. Butter Couch is actually in shed, so we were not gonna handle her today, but I'm sure we will sometime soon. And look at this beautiful little girl right here. Female reticulated python, just like Lucy. And it just goes to show you. Look at the difference of temperament. Yes, yeah, she's flicking her tongue. That's not anything to worry about. She's just curious like our girl Ivy. Fan favorite right here. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that not all retics you have. You don't have to worry about a snake just because it's a reticulated python. And that just goes to show, like we said, every animal is different. Every animal has their own personality. So you can't say all male retics are mean. You can't say all female retics are mean. It just, it's not true. She just doing great. Lucy, she did great. She did do great. She didn't even try to get us at all. We had to be careful because we know that she's a moody woman, which most women are. <laughs> Here, kitty, kitty. You got the nip. Thank you, Connie. You're welcome. Now, when you guys hear iguana, you might not think dangerous, but this is actually the only animal in 40 years that sent my dad to the hospital. How many with stitches? stitches? Was it? it was 17, but it was loose. They had to do them loose because it needed to breathe so that it wouldn't get infected. If it was tight stitches, he probably would have got close to 50. His whole tattoo was split open. He had multiple splits. The only animal that sent him to the hospital. 40 years of reptile keeping. Because these guys are omnivores, you would think that this can't be some animal that has crazy big teeth. That actually isn't true. These guys are actually capable of killing other animals, killing other eagles. Iguanas. I mean, if you take a look at their tail here, that thing right there is powerful enough. I mean, we've seen it. He's literally broken the glass with that tail before. And that just tells you the sheer strength that these animals have. You see an iguana like this and you're like, oh my God, it looks like Godzilla. That's so cool. Let me get one. Especially as they're babies, males and such. They're all pretty docile. They, they can be a little energetic, but not too much. And then once they hit that sexual maturity and their hormones start going, they can turn into a completely different animal just like Tabasco did. Right, buddy? Don't forget these guys have super powerful feet and powerful tails. They use these guys to climb up trees, pack their prey. Also, kind of just like baby kush, dig into their prey if they need to. Although they are super cute and they are cool, this is not an animal to be mucked with. You may be surprised at a uh, green iguana on our most dangerous animals list, but it's definitely something that you gotta respect. And look at the absolute differences between these animals right here. Waffles still have to kind of respect, because he does have a mouth and it's full of teeth and he has got big claws, but still, it's like we know our boy and he's like a little puppy right here. I actually think he like loves us in here petting him and hanging out with him and stuff like that. Dude, he doesn't even have to move and he's getting attention. Literally, he was closing his eyes when I was rubbing a certain spot. And yes, it is a different species and different monitor than say, baby kush you see each monitor is a different individual and and it's hard not to anthropomorphize them it does seem like they all have different personalities if i'm being honest our boy waffles here you wanna give me a kiss giving kisses out and everything like that so we don't want to scare you guys about a video like this no we just kind of want to teach you that hey yes yeah, some you have to be a little bit weary of but they're not bad people, especially because they're not people. Now, our boy Hiccup here is a snow blind albino Asian water monitor. Now, I always laugh because the term snow blind for our boy Hiccup here is a little too literal. Doesn't respond to ball training because his eyesight is so poor. He's the type of guy that will bite first and ask questions second. Doesn't mean that he's a bad animal or he wants blood. It just means you have to be careful. But it's interesting to see that. All right, salt albino, Hiccup albino. They both have poor eyesight. Salt just kind of like chilling though. And then Hiccup here, he's he's a little bit more, ah, I don't even know how to describe it. So honestly, I think that that comes from the difference between an alligator and a monitor lizard. Listen, I'm not here to say that alligators are stupid, but I am here to say that monitors are one of the most intelligent reptiles that there are. So what he's doing is he sees movement. He's like, oh, that's food. Where salt's kind of like, hey, I'm just here. In the nose. Oh. This guy needs a little bit of a nail trimming, and honestly, I don't feel like getting, uh, what is that? Five, 10, 20 razor blades just absolutely torn through my hand and my arms today. So as you see, you pick him up and he's chilling like that. But all these reasons that we discussed is why it's very crucial to doing a lot of research before you buy an animal. What if you never knew that albinos had poor eyesight and it might lead to a little bit of a more defensive disposition? Just little stuff like that that you need to learn before you make a lifelong decision. Any final words? Love you, Hiccup. We love you too. No, are we gonna go check anything else out or? No, but speaking of out, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.